Welcome guys and gals to another edition of Tekken 10 with Sin. Uh, today I'm taking a look at the Z77X-UP7 from Gigabyte. This is Gigabyte's uh, top of the line Z77 motherboard. Uh, this motherboard features all the goodies from Gigabyte. Um, all the latest overclocking goodies are there too. You have OC Touch over here. You have a bunch of switches. LN2 mode, um, dual BIOS, single BIOS, uh, dual BIOS switch between each BIOS, uh, postcode display, reset switch, power button, clear CMOS, tons of voltage read points with the connectors that are included. Um, you have a hefty 32 plus 3 plus 2 phase VRM. You have a USB 3.0 internal headers here. You have 6 USB 2.0 on the back. You have all the VGA outputs. You have PS slash 2, 7.1 audio. You have audio with amps, dual NICs, 7 fan connectors. Let's count those fan connectors, shall we? 1, 2, um, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven entire fan connectors on this motherboard. Now, if that isn't insane, then I don't know what's insane. I like this uh, reset switch right there. It's very cool. Um, the heatsink is just fantastic. As you're taking a look right now, you can probably see how really immaculate Gigabyte did. Did a great job with the heatsink on this motherboard. Um, so we're going to take a look at... Uh, different parts of this motherboard and I'm gonna start from the top uh, let's zoom in a little bit more let's see if we can uh, make sure that image is crisp for you guys alright so here we have a 32 phase voltage regulator module uh, you have dual 8 pin connectors right there uh, these dual 8 pin connectors are very useful um, they give you excellent uh, power input Gigabyte actually did a demo where they outputted 2000 watts with this voltage regulator module each phase uses IR3550, and that's each phase is 60 amp output. You can glimpse one IR3550 for here. It's probably for VGA output uh, for the iGPU power. Uh, you have three IR3550 over there for the memory. Um, the OC touch is immaculate. Uh, here you have an uh, IR. 3563A, which is an 8 plus 0 phase controller, that goes to 8 quadruplers. Now the quadruplers each take 1 PWM input and output 4. What happens is that makes a set, 4 sets of 8 phase voltage regulator modules. So you basically have 4 times the voltage regulator module as the UP5. Um, you do have different inductors here, uh, they are slightly less current output. Um, however, these inductors have a current output of around 30 amps, which is way more than you can ever push, um, even if there's only eight phases. Um, here we have a uh, PLX bridge uh, chip that has a heatsink over it. We also have the Gigabyte PCH heatsink, which is pretty handy and nice. Uh, it looks very, very fancy. Um, so you have a bunch of PCIe switches, and you're wondering what that's about too, and I'll get over that soon. Tons of chips all over the place really beautiful layout design the orange and black scheme on this board has been done really nicely uh, you have tons of features over here for overclocking um, you have postcode display reset button dual BIOS switch uh, so let me talk about some of the OC features now okay so here we have OC touch right now OC touch is pretty well-known technology from x58 era and I remember the x588-OC a lot of people were going nuts about OC touch it is literally when you have it on a motherboard one of the best parts of the motherboard people said the x79-UD7 people said the best part of that board was OC touch and that was very true um, however this part in this board OC touch is just as good as it was before however it's not one of, it's one of the best features and not the best feature um, let me move around to the other side now. Uh, so we have a uh, power button right here, and then you have an LN2 switch right here, and you're probably wondering what the LN2 switch is all about. LN2 switch is like a slow mode button. Um, so basically, let's say you're in the BIOS, and like Haikuki, uh, let's say you want a CPU Z frequency world record, right? Everyone wants a frequency world record, so why not take it? This board is going to help you do that. Um, so basically you have uh, buttons here that on the fly will change base clock up, base clock down, multiplier up, multiplier down gear button will allow you to change the base clock in lower increments so now it's 0 0.1 megahertz up 0 0.1 megahertz down click it again 1 megahertz up 1 megahertz down power button clear CMOS button is a good place right here very good place voltage read points and then you have connectors for them as well so let's say you're in the bio and on the bus in Windows and you want a world record let's say you have enabled LN2 mode LN2 mode will take the uh, Multiplier down to 16x in a fail-safe mode. So it's on the fly, can change between 16x and your current multiplier. 
So what happens is you take the multiplier up to 63x, you're in the BIOS, or not in the BIOS, in Windows, 63x. Then you go back, you switch to LN2 mode, and let's say you're at 110 megahertz. Well, now you're about 1800 megahertz. 1800 megahertz for total speed when LN2 mode is enabled. You can increase with gear button a few uh, megahertz and then you switch LN2 mode again, press F7 because now it's at 7.112 gigahertz and then you go back with LN2 mode and go into normal and you can click up another base clock and then go back in LN2 mode, disable it, go up to 7 gigahertz, take a screenshot, hit it again, go back to 1800 megahertz, go down. So you can go back and forth between 1.8 gigahertz and 7.1 gigahertz with this switch on the fly and that allows you to go back and forth and find your max clock. So here you have your voltage, uh, your memory voltage regulator, you have a 3570 PWM and then you have a 3IR3550, each of those can output about 60 amps. Um, you saw the fan connectors earlier, that's a USB 3.0 header internally, it's in a good place, it's natively provided by the Intel Z77 chipset. Uh, there you have a PCIe extra power for it. It's an XCTA power connector. It's called OCPEG, and it gives power to all these four f ports when needed um, to run four-way. Uh, here you have a bunch of uh, SATA ports. Um, you have eight in total, and these eight are really, really overdone for this board because this board was meant to be an overclocking board. However, they put a lot of features like this in so that uh, other users will buy it too. So this also makes a great like server type motherboard for this platform because you have tons of SATA, you have tons of USB 3.0, you have tons of Ethernet ports. So here you have these two white ones are Intel SATA 6 gigabytes per second. Then you have four Intel 3 gigabytes per second. And then you have four more Marvel SATA 6 gigabytes per second. The Marvel controllers are right here and right here. An Etron Tech controller down here provides USB 3.0 right here. These, this header for two ports. Um, you have a reset switch right here, like I said before, a postcode display right here. Then you have these two switches, and they're kind of peculiar because they've never been seen together on a motherboard before, especially not from Gigabyte. And you're probably wondering what the heck they do. Anyways, this is your normal BIOS selector switch. So main BIOS, backup BIOS. You know, you have an OC BIOS on one BIOS and you have a normal BIOS on the other. However, there's a dual BIOS uh, feature on these boards. And the dual BIOS feature uh, basically requires the board to check the main and backup BIOS to make sure the ROMs are the same and the versions are the same and there's no features in between them. However, if there is a discrepancy, then the board will go into a three-cycle loop. And that loop will um, basically be an annoyance. Um, Basically, if you fail for base clock overclocking through the BIOS, not through Windows, but through the BIOS, then it'll go through a system error where you'll see DB on the postcode display, and it'll go halfway into the BIOS, and only half the BIOS screen will show, and then it'll restart itself. Um, basically, it takes three loops of a restart, and then it'll reset itself like nothing happened. This switch right here enables you to switch between normal single BIOS mode and dual BIOS mode. So enabled by default, it's in dual BIOS mode and dual BIOS is working. However, if you do have those errors and you're overclocking and you don't want them, you can switch to single BIOS mode and dual BIOS is thus cut off and does not exist anymore on the motherboard. However, you can always re-enable it by switching the switch. Now, here's the deal. A lot of time the dual BIOS is also responsible, the dual BIOS mechanism is also responsible for the issues with uh, when you hit restart in Windows, sometimes it goes and fully shuts down the system and starts it back up. Or if you save a setting in BIOS during a cold boot and you restart, it'll fully shut down the board and restart. Sometimes there's an issue with that because users sometimes don't always want that to happen, especially if you're going to trigger a cold boot bug if you're at negative like 120 degrees and you change something in the BIOS. Disabling dual BIOS and going to single BIOS mode is going to help that significantly. Um, so that's also why it's there. Uh, here you have your USB 2.0 internal headers as well as front panel headers. There's also a clear CMOS header uh, down here as well to help you. Then you have your audio front panel header um, right here. You have a Communicom header, a serial port provided by TI chip. And right there you have three chips. Those are extremely important. This is an ALC898. This is your audio codec. Um, all these nice capacitors are here for it as well as this uh, untouched part of the PCB up and down here is for your analog signals. Um, these two amps right here are made by Texas Instruments. One of them outputs for the headphone in the front and the other one outputs for the green jack in the back. Um, and your 7.1 audio. Up here you have two NICs. Uh, here you have Intel NIC and here you have Athros and so you have dual NIC on this board. Uh, so you're wondering about all these PCIe switches right here and I'm going to explain exactly what their use is. Um, so basically what happened is 
a lot of people run a multi-GPU, but then a lot of people don't buy this board for multi-GPU. They buy it for OC Touch, they buy it because it's the best board, and they only want one graphics card. The issue with the PLX chip is, well, first of all, the great part of the PLX chip is you can it doubles your PCIe lanes, allowing for multi-GPU support. So natively, the Intel chipset only provides dual two S two way SLI. This board provides four way SLI. However, it does have an issue with only a single graphics card. The downside to increasing these lanes is it adds latency. And the issue is when you're just running a single card, you want to run it natively. That's what these eight switches up here do. These eight switches each can switch two lanes of PCI 3.0. So basically, before the CPU gives this lane to a PLX, it first gives these lanes to all these switches. These switches can either give it to the PLX or give it to this lane. So you put a GPU in here, and then all these other four orange ports are cut off, and the PLX is shut down. However, if you just put a GPU in this slot or this slot or this slot or any of the orange slots then this black slot is shut down this black shot gives you black slot gives you a direct bypass through the PLX um, so it's great for people who just want to run single GPU um, also it's a little distanced from the top here and so you can insulate pretty well around it too if you choose um, so let me take a look at the back panel and then I'm also going to take the heat sinks off because I've already done that actually and uh, we're going to take a look at those um, so let's take a look at the back panel here alright so from my right I have a PS slash 2 6 USB 3.0 these two are natively Intel and these four are provided by VLA, VLI 800 uh, controller it's a controller not a hub uh, HDMI right here display port right here SPDIF out Optical for audio right here, uh, D-Sub, also known as VGA right here, DVI output right here. PS slash 2 is good for gamers as well as overclockers because we like a very basic interrupt type signaling. Um, also, disabling USB is also, not using USB is also good for us because it doesn't pull the CPU. That's why PS slash 2 is very demanded by overclockers. If you have 7.1 surround sound um, audio outputs, remember the green jack is amplified. All right, so taking a look at the back of the motherboard, um, I'm going to put this motherboard like this. Um, there's something about it that I don't have on there right now, and I'm going to put on. Right here you can see all these IR3550 MOSFETs, right? However, what I'm not telling you is that they actually came covered by a heatsink. I have actually removed all the screws. Basically, this right here has a thermal pad that will help cool down every single one of those MOSFETs. Not only that, but it also provides protection, and it's very big and very sturdy. Um, so it's very cool, right? Very nice. Um, and then, so that protects that. So I've unscrewed everything, right? So at this point, I'm going to take off the heat sinks. You can see the heat sinks. They're very nice. They're fin-shaped. Um, they provide really nice air cooling uh, support. Uh, they came with thermal paste, but I replaced it with my own because I have already I had to clean it off the chips to take nice pictures. Um, the thermal paste they provide is very suitable. There's no need to replace it. Um, Gigabyte's written in orange right here. Very shiny, very cool. Uh, I really like it. You see that glow? Isn't that cool? And Ultra Durable does the same thing. Right? Okay, so now I remove the heatsink. And now we have the board without the heatsink, which I actually prefer. But actually, on this board, I think the heatsink looks really damn good. Uh, so I tend not to take it off that much. Uh, so I just want to get back and focus here. So now you can see all the chips on this motherboard. It's really filled with chips. Uh, you see the ITE Super I/O right here provides PS2 as all well as all the fan control and support. Uh, you have tons of yummies and goodies on this motherboard. Uh, it's definitely worth to give it a look at. Um, it definitely does a lot of good. Um, so let's take a look at the back of the motherboard. There's also one other thing I want to emphasize here. Now, I'm not sure if I can get this into focus, uh, but I'm going to try it, okay? Okay, up there in that corner, you can see the number of layers in the PCB. Um, yeah, and I don't think I can focus on that. It's too close. I can focus right here. If you look in this motherboard when you buy it in this little corner, up there will be the number 10. That means this motherboard has a 10 layer PCB. That is intense, all right? For all these signals to be routed uh, from the PLX, you see all those traces, right? You see them all? Imagine all the traces right there. You see that? You see the memory topology here needs to be correct. You have all these IR power stages under here. Um, they're basically 
very, very high quality driver MOSFETs. Um, however, driver MOSFETs a brand name and this spec is above that of the driver MOSFET and thus is incorrect to call these driver MOSFETs. Um, let's take a look at one of the, how, the size of one of these quadruplers, right? Because they are tiny, man. They are so small and their job is so big because they provide eight voltage regulator modules. This little chip right here that's a quadrupler. Takes one PWM output, outputs four PWM outputs. This PWM little controller has the ability to change this into one giant 32 phase voltage regulator module. All right. It also has the ability to put it into four sectioned eight phase voltage regulator modules or just one eight phase voltage regulator module. This Volt VRM doesn't require heat sinks to run at all because the load is so little on each phase that it just doesn't require it. And that was one of the benefits of building this board like this. This motherboard is designed so that you don't really need much to run it. Uh, you can run this without a heat sink. It's perfect for water-cooled systems. Um, it's just gorgeous in its build design and gorgeous in every aspect of its design. Um, I really give a lot of props for everyone at Gigabyte who designed this board, uh, including the overclocker from Huki, Haikuki, and then um, all the engineers who worked very hard to make sure it had all the OC features that we overclockers demand. Um, into the implementation because the BIOS right now is that some BIOS it's actually not bad it's workable overclockable and this board's not even released yet this board should release soon I am told um, I don't even have the full retail package yet uh, I am working on a review so if you want more detailed um, accounts or you want more information on the board feel free to PM me um, I have no problem answering questions um, Please visit me at uh, www.sinhardware.com, S-I-N-H-A-R-D-W-A-R-E.com, um, Sin Hardware. Uh, that's my site, and I do a bunch of in-depth hardware reviews where I go over every chip on the motherboard. I hope you enjoyed this video, um, and uh, I hope if you have any questions you'll ask, any comments, please post them. Thank you for watching. And I'm just going to go over the motherboard a little bit more and then shut it off. All right? Bye-bye. Oh, and if you're watching this far, uh, it's good for me to tell you that the cost of this motherboard's voltage regular is that of an Ace Rock board. Um, that's how much money Gigabyte spent on the voltage regular on this motherboard. Uh, so keep that in mind when you buy it. You are really getting a crap load of value for your money, uh, especially in the voltage regular department. Uh, this is probably going to be the most powerful motherboard ever launched in the world. My only issue is I don't know how Gigabyte's going to one-up this VRM next time around. But um, otherwise, it's a really sick motherboard. Uh, very, very sick. I have a lot of respect for the people who built this. And if you're wondering, yes, this is my light box. All right, guys. Bye.